On the 21st of January 2019, a Piper PA46 Malibu crashed in the English Channel of Alderney in the Channel Islands en route from Nantes in France to Cardiff in Wales. Why did a perfectly flyable aircraft seemingly fall out of the sky? Why didn't the pilot set out a distress call? And what safety recommendations did the authorities come up with to prevent something like this from happening again? Hi, my name is Flo. Welcome to Fordek. The pilot held a PPR license and had, at the time of the accident, 3,500 hours in total, 30 of which are locked on this very type. He was qualified to fly that aircraft at that time. A difference training for the PF-46 was obtained, however it was not established whether the pilot had undertaken the FAA's equivalent um, complex aircraft training for the PA-46. A type rating for that type is not required. The pilot had little experience flying under instrument meteorological conditions or operating under instrument flight rules. However, the pilot held a valid IFR rating at the time of the crash. The pilot's FAA license did not specifically contain any day-only restriction. This, together with the difference training, which was signed off for day and night flying, might have wrongly led the pilot to believe he was qualified to fly at night. The aircraft involved was a PA46310P Malibu, manufactured in 1984 with a 310 brake horsepower fuel injected twin turbocharged air cooled engine. The low wing pressurized aircraft is certified for flights up to 25,000 feet. It is fitted with a constant speed prop and retractable gear. There are several variants of the PA46. The one shown in the simulations is a Meridian, powered by a more powerful. PT6 with 500 shaft horsepower. It has slightly more wing area, a reinforced fuselage, a higher take of weight, and a more modern flight deck, including a Garmin G1000. Although for visualization purposes of the accident flight, this is not of importance. The aircraft took off from runway 03 at Nantes Airport at 1915 hours, and the pilot asked the ATC controller for clearance to climb up to 5,500 feet. The climb was approved by Nantes Air Approach Control, and the VFR flight plan was activated. The aircraft flew in its planned route about 265 nautical miles almost direct towards Cardiff until it was approximately 30 nautical miles south of Gunzi when the pilot requested and was given the descent clearance to remain under VMC conditions. He might have elected to descend to a low altitude because of a cloud layer that has formed in front of the cold front which was moving through overnight along with numerous showers. Other pilots operating at that time in that area reported little or no icing. As a pilot was flying with the VFR flight plan, he had to remain out of the clouds at all times. The aircraft's autopilot and flight directors were inoperative at the time of the accident. There was no record of the fault having been rectified. However, radar data, particularly the accuracy of heading and altitude hold, suggests that the autopilot was engaged during the flight. The last ready contact with the aircraft was with Jersey ATC at 2.012 hours when the pilot asked for a further descent below flight level 50 probably to regain visual conditions. Shortly afterwards, a right followed by a left turn was flown with a bank angle of up to 56 degrees. The aircraft descended, climbed, and then ascended again with a vertical speed of up to 5,000 feet per minute. This maneuver was very likely flown with the autopilot off in order to regain VMC. During the final descending turn towards the sea, an indicated airspeed of 235 knots, 32 knots above the navx exceed speed was recorded, and a maximum chi load of 5.6 chi was reached, as later shown in simulations. The excessive speed and chi loads, along with the bank angle and vertical speed parameters, indicate a loss of control. During analysis of the damage to November 264 Delta Bravo, it is pretty likely that the aircraft had suffered from an in-flight structural breakup. The aircraft was destroyed, with its one passenger dead and the pilot missing, who is yet to be found. Possible malfunctions of the aircraft at Nantes, the pilot informed several individuals about potential technical problems that had occurred on the aircraft after he departed from Cardiff, the lag prior to the fatal flight. The stall warning, which would indicate a stalled wing, was sounding continuously. Because of that, the pilot pulled the circuit breaker of the stall warning to stop it from sounding at all. Another malfunction was a loud bang heard by the pilot together with mist sensed in the airframe. Unfortunately, it was impossible to establish the reason for the single bang and the mist the pilot sensed in the cabin. One reason for the mist could have been a failure in the pressurization system. Prior to the accident flight, the pilot did a proper engine ground run with his cutting removed to investigate. However, no problem was discovered. 
the level of CO in the passenger's blood led the pathologist to conclude that he would have been deeply unconscious when the aircraft struck the water. The most probable cause as to why CO was entering the cabin was considered to be exhaust gases leaking into the heater muffler with uh, cabin heating selected on. Four minutes prior to the accident, at 2.012 hours, the pilot was talking lucidly on the radio explaining that he was going to maneuver to avoid bad weather. And this suggested that if he had already been exposed to CO, the symptoms were at the lower end of the scale. The flight path over the following 90 seconds was unstable and included high bank angles and high rates of climb and descents, inconsistent with normal cruise flight. These could have been the first symptoms of CO poisoning, which were affecting his ability to control the aircraft. It was unlikely that the pilot maneuvered in this way deliberately to avoid weather because the flight path was so extreme that it represented a greater risk than the weather he would have been trying to avoid. Another probable cause mentioned in the accident report is the pilot's lack of training in night flying. No recent practice in instrument flying is likely to have increased the risk of loss of control. However, I disagree as no IFA training would prevent a pilot from getting CO poisoning. Good technical knowledge of the aircraft might have been helpful in switching off cabin heating when identifying the early stages of CO poisoning. Although mostly, when you feel something is wrong, it's probably too late to take prop action. That being said, operating a flight on a VFR at night in poor weather conditions despite the pilot having no training in night flying and the lack of recent practice in instrument flying was definitely a contributing factor. A simple CO detector might have prevented this tragic loss. Of the 1,177 PA-46s produced from 2002 through 2019, 225 accidents have been reported, including 106 hull losses, causing 219 fatalities. 9% of the aircraft produced within that time were total losses. And for today's standard, that is uh, quite a substantial number. For comparison, Cesta built over 2,000 of their Cessna Caravan 208B with 231 incidents recorded and only 166 fatalities. That is 8.3% compared to 18.6%. Of course, this is not a scientific comparison. That being said, these numbers do not represent the quality of the aircraft. The problem could also be that the smaller PA-46 is more widely flown by private pilots, often even owning their own plane, while the Cessna Caravan is usually commercially operated. November 264 Delta Bravo was permitted to operate in accordance with Part 91, which is intended for private use only. The regulatory safety standards for commercially operated flights are more stringent than those for private flights. These standards include more highly qualified pilots whose competence is checked more frequently, more stringent airworthiness requirements for aircraft, and more operational and engineering procedures to support operations. From the assessments of the possible routes for CO having entered the cabin during the accident, the most probable cause was exhaust gases leaking into the heat muff with the cabin heating selected on. This heat muffler connected to the airplane's exhaust system to provide heat to the cabin is installed on this variant of the PA-46. The maintenance organization stated that the heater muff shroud was removed and inspected. However, there was no record found if a pressure test of the heat muffler has been carried out. A pressure test could have led the maintenance organization to notice the faulty heat muffler and replace it. It is recommended that authorities require piston engine aircraft which may have a risk of carbon monoxide poisoning to have a CO detector with an active warning to alert pilots to the presence of elevated levels of carbon monoxide. Now, this is only one of many safety recommendations investigators came up with to prevent other aircraft from crashing under such unfortunate circumstances in the future. Until the next one, stay safe.